Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. Now recently I've done a few uh, smaller sort of Transformers repair videos that everyone seems to have really enjoyed and the one that I get requested most off the back of those is uh, to do a restoration on a vintage Transformers G1 sound wave. Uh, on the one on the left here was one that was very kindly sent in by Michael Schaefer and I am going to do some work on that. And I've also been sent another one now by uh, Richard Fouquet uh, which is in slightly worse condition so those are two figures that I am going to get onto in the future. I'm just trying to find the last couple of parts I need for the sort of uh, accessories and that to get them done. So once I've found those, I will cover that. But in the meantime, I thought I'd do some work on this little Ravage, which came with uh, Michael's one here. Now you can see here that this is Ravage. I will transform him quickly, just so you can see uh, that it does all transform properly. And what I wanted to do with this uh, Ravage though is give him a very good clean, try and sort out some of the uh, sort of tarnishing on the metal of his legs, because overall it's actually not a bad figure, but the tarnished metal really sort of makes it look quite old and quite sort of worn out. And I think that's going to be very easy to sort of tidy up and make this figure look almost as good as new. I do also have uh, the weapons for this Ravage and you can see one of them has got a few bits of chrome missing but the other one it's lost every single piece of uh, chrome off it so I want to uh, sort of try and re-chrome these so that they look again like they should do when it first came out of the box but the first thing I want to do uh, really is to tidy up the metal on this and then give it a good wash as well so let's get on with that and we'll see if we can make this Ravage look as good as new. So here we have a close-up view of Ravage and you can see there's a little bit of wear to the sort of print work on there but I'm not that worried about that. What I want to sort out is this, all of the sort of the staining and the sort of aging that's gone on with the metal. It makes it look very old and very dirty. Even if you wash this in soapy water it's not going to come off. What we need to do is use something slightly more abrasive on the metal parts of it and then we'll give the whole thing a good wash and for that we are going to be using Brasso, which is uh, something that you use to, uh, it's a metal polish that you would use to sort of clean brass, copper, stainless steel and chrome and you can get it in most shops in the UK. Uh, it smells a little bit but it does do a fantastic job and this is going to be a little bit on the fiddly side just because this is such a small figure but I reckon using a bit of Brasso very carefully on all of these metal pieces this will start to shine and look really really nice. So let's open the Brasso. You can see it's this sort of fabric uh, stuff infused with something that obviously uh, polishes up the metal. I'm just going to take a small amount of that off like so. I'm going to put the rest back in and close it because as I say it does smell quite horrid and then we're going to just gently rub this onto one of the legs. What I'll show you now as you can see both of the legs look pretty dirty and I will clean this up one with the Brasso and I'll show you the end result and you'll see how nice that looks before I go and do all of the rest. It will probably take 10 to 15 minutes to get these legs polished up but it's going to make a massive difference. There you go, that's only a few minutes work but immediately you can see how much of a difference that makes between that's the leg that I've polished and that's the one that I haven't. It does leave a little bit of a residue on everything which leaves a sort of white, you can see there's sort of a white residue but that will wash off in hot soapy water but you can see now look how nice that leg looks compared to this one. Uh, and that's just with a few minutes of sort of gentle rubbing. I'm being careful not to rub any of the print that's on any of the rest of the figure because it's, it's uh, because this is slightly abrasive it may take that off as well so uh, I'm just being extra cautious and it's working a treat. So I'm going to go and give the rest of these uh, metal pieces a clean now and we'll get this looking as good as it possibly can.
and there you go with only a few minutes work you can see how nice and shiny these legs are looking i've still got the insides of a couple of them to do that one's still a little bit dirty but uh, the overall effect is much much better it really does start to sort of shine and look like it is new you can see the little bits of residue i've said the sort of white powdery stuff once i've finished doing all of this i'm just going to give it a quick wash with some hot soapy water and then that will look really quite smart and we can move on to the weapons we can now deal with the chrome loss on both of these weapons and for that we're going to be using molotov liquid chrome pens which i've shown a couple of times in other videos these are incredibly useful if you are fixing toys that have chrome like this you just have to be very patient with it apply a, a layer of it over the sort of the damaged chrome and then leave it for as long as you possibly can I generally leave it for a couple of weeks and that lets it harden and set really quite firmly if you don't leave it long enough if you touch it you'll end up dulling the surface it's a just a patience game with all of these things so i'm going to do both of these weapons now and then i'm going to leave them for a couple of weeks and the way i sort of work now is i've got this uh, little tool clipper which has these little uh, crocodile sort of clips on it and i will grab the main part of the weapon i'll paint it all up and then i'm going to just hook it onto my tool clipper here and leave it so i don't have to touch anything and i make sure that i'm not touching any surfaces with my fingers once these are done so that i do have the opportunity to leave it for a long time i've got two different pens here both with different size nibs this is a four millimeter nib and then this is a one millimeter nib i'll use the four millimeter nib for doing the bulk of it and then the one millimeter nib for doing the sort of areas that i can't get that uh, larger pen into i think with this one I will get away with just using the four millimeter nib because all the worn areas are on the sort of outside extremities I don't think I'll have any problem and for this one where all of the chrome has been removed I'll be using both pens make sure to shake the pens really well before you use them It's now a couple of weeks later I haven't touched these at all in that time they've just been sat on the side and uh, they should be ready to go so we'll take this one off now this one I know is the one that had no chrome on it at all because you can see uh, the little uh, peg that actually attaches to Ravage I haven't bothered to paint you can see that looks really quite nice that's a very convincing uh, chrome effect those pens really do make a tremendous job of uh, the chrome on these sorts of weapons uh, and then this one is the one that had some chrome left on it you can see there because the peg still has a little bit of chrome there so we've touched up the sort of worn areas on that looks very nice indeed i can now go ahead and put these onto ravage he's been waiting very patiently to uh, get his armor and weapons back the polishing that i've done on ravage's legs has actually worn some of the nickel plating away that coats the metal pieces they're made out of copper and have a very thin nickel layer placed over the top of them and i think that's something i should be able to fix using the electro plating kit that i have so let's take ravage out into my garage and we'll see what can be done so here we go i am now out in my garage and this is the setup we need to do the nickel plating onto the legs of this ravage figure i have a few different chemicals here and i also have a power supply so i can supply a voltage to these two uh, leads here the first thing that we've needed to do is actually to polish the metal parts again so there's some uh, metal polishing compound here and i've already done that because it's a bit of a slow process now because the metal bits have already been nickel plated once you can see the copper coming through but there's still nickel on them we need to run a nickel activator 
alternator over it and I've been told to do this at 7.5 volts so I've set the power supply up to 7.5 volts. I put some of the nickel activator into this pot here and I'm going to get some onto this bit of uh, wadding that's at one end of uh, the power supply. We've got the black cable going to the metal bits and we've got the red cable going to this probe here which I'm going to dip into the nickel activator and then rub over the metal bits. Obviously I've got to sort of rearrange things and do it in a couple of stages because there's so many metal pieces but I will do it as quick as I can. We'll then rinse that off into some water and then we'll apply the nickel plating solution which we apply at a slightly lower voltage and hopefully it should all plate. So let's just get on with it. I'm not sure if you can see this uh, clear enough out here in the lights of my garage but that has worked remarkably well. You can see that all the copper has now disappeared and we're back to looking like the original sort of metal that Ravage was made of. I've got a few little areas that I think I've missed so I'm just going to go over and redo those again and I'll give this a clean. We'll take it inside and I will show you the finished result. Right so I'm back indoors and you can see this is how Ravage looks now. The electro plating of the nickel has really worked very nicely. I was perfectly happy actually with the sort of copper showing through but because I already have this kit it's a good chance to use it and test it out and you can see that that has made a big difference there's now no copper showing through and uh, Ravage's legs actually look like they would have done sort of back when I originally uh, picked one up as a child so it's certainly a worthwhile process if you have the equipment and uh, yeah it does make a massive difference the kit was actually uh, given to me by Gold Solutions a couple of years back I'll put a link in the description uh, to where you can get one for yourself and check out the other things that they do uh, because I've used it a few times on some projects and they've also helped me out on some other restorations I've been doing doing some chrome plating uh, and they're a sort of expertise in that uh, really helps out and I've been chatting with Paul about how best to go about doing this uh, nickel plating and getting it sort of working uh, as best as I could. As you can see that has really made quite a nice difference. So I hope this project has been of interest to you. It's not exactly how I sort of planned it when I started out. I was just sort of planning to fix the uh, chrome up and clean those but uh, because this needed a bit of extra work it has got a little bit more complicated but I'm very pleased with how Ravage now looks and he's certainly going to go on display here at Toy Polloi and uh, hopefully soon I'll get all the pieces that I need to be able to get on with uh, fixing up the sound waves that I have here and get those working so I know people are interested to see how I go about repairing those. So I hope this video has been of interest to you. If it has then hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.